So if we're all sheltered, I'll just let some images and videos play in the background as I talk here and just kind of get a view. Now, some of the videos you'll notice are a bit shaky. Some of them uh, that are on this presentation, um, I made sure that uh, they were all appropriate for luncheon. But with that said, when you're in Ukraine right now, there is a lot of concern about whether or not the video footage is able to give away any strategic points, any military groupings and such. So of course they don't want the Russians to get a hold of that. So the strict laws and the strict policies, uh, there are times where journalists, we were, uh, we were held at gunpoint with six machine guns at us while they went through our phones checking messages. They were deleting images and videos off phones. And it's all about uh, keeping the soldiers, all of them safe and strategic installations. Unfortunately, some videos, some photos that were not sensitive uh, were deleted, but uh, it's all a part of making sure that if you do go over there to assist, that you understand that they are under attack and that you're cooperative and you're there to bring attention to what's going on and to help to bring relief, not to be a liability. With that said, there were a lot of people going and volunteering from around the world, and they were showing up there thinking that it was a video game. And uh, unfortunately, there were times where the military in Ukraine was having to babysit people that really didn't know what they were doing on the front lines and uh, had lied about their prerequisites. So it put more soldiers in harm's way than it did uh, to actually help and to move things forward. Now they've uh, changed that policy. People are now being directed to non-combat roles and uh, medical areas, and uh, that's, that's very important. One of the biggest things that really touched me when I was there is when I flew into Warsaw, into Poland, uh, I had a week there where I drove around to the different uh, refugee welcoming centers and assisted with different NGOs uh, in addition to documenting it, uh, getting, you know, rolling up my sleeves, getting in there to unload trucks to help with anything that was needed, shuttling, uh, shuttling people back and forth from the border to the reception centers. Now the welcome centers are where the majority of the NGOs and organizations such as uh, the money you're raising here today, a lot of that help goes to the people at the borders at the welcome centers. People were coming in 24 hours a day. They were walking through uh, minus 10 degree weather for days at a time, toting little children, pets, and uh, just freezing. There were uh, one gentleman that had a heart attack in between the border patrol station and the gates into Poland. There are just amazing amount of doctors, veterinarians, uh, you know, and just everyday volunteers feeding them clothing them, uh, just all the essentials, baby formula, diapers and such. So the world coming together, such as this event may seem small, but it's huge in terms of the impact that it can have on the people in Ukraine. Here you can see this tunnel here. Oh, battery's running low, that's okay. Uh, this is one of the tunnels under the streets. So it's just like a pedestrian walkway under the main intersections. But this had over a thousand people at one point hiding uh, in there at night and sleeping there to avoid any airstrikes. So it gives you an idea as to how small the space is and how desperate it, it is at times there. I was there when the bombing was active. Uh, at all times of day and night, you would hear the air raid sirens going off. You'd wake up in the middle of the night and you look out the hotel window, the city's dark, and you just look for any glowing coming through the sky at your location. So with that, you don't know what's gonna happen next. And I can only imagine, I was there for a short period of time in, re uh, in relation to how the citizens of Ukraine are coping with this, how the children that are still in the country are gonna grow up knowing that they've been under attack and having the mental scars of constant air raid sirens, the, the ground shaking under your feet, uh, just hearing the blasts, and then of course going in uh, after Russia left Bucha and seeing what happened there. So I can only imagine what the trauma is gonna be for generations to come that they're gonna be suffering at the hands of this illegal war. 
So once again, I thank everyone for coming out. The need there is great. And uh, it's not just about coming out to events like this, but also just making sure that when you're sharing information online, that you're sharing it from reputable sources. There are images out there of an oil fire or an oil refinery fire. And if you look close at some of those images, it was actually the Edmonton Fire Department. <laughs> so it's important to pay attention to the truth, the reality, and that there are many lives that are being lost unnecessarily and being impacted. So again, it all starts at a community level around the world. And thank you to this community for coming out to show your support. Thank you. Thank you.